Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining today um, for the NHSR uh, community webinar for May. Um, today we have King's College London colleagues, um, they'll be talking about the Innovation Scholars Data Programme, um, so great to have the guys from King's College London um, along today. Um, so I am Scott Wilson, I am from Public Health Scotland, I lead our Statistical Governance Unit up here um, and I'm also part of the NHSR community and its steering group. Um, so welcome to, every welcome to everybody today and welcome along to the King's College London team. Uh, so before we get started folks, um, before we hand over to, uh, uh, to the host today, um, just a little bit around the NHSR community. Um, as you know, they run lots of training courses, lots of webinars, and um, so please keep an eye on the upcoming events on the website. Um, NHSR community is um, funding open source solutions, um, so that's aimed to, to help the NHS and the wider public sector um, and, uh, to try and take advantage of, of all the stuff that ARC can do and all the, all the benefits that that brings along, so, so have a look at that online as well. And also, whilst you're on there, um, please also have a look at um, our social media, get in touch with us. Um, we've got some blog writing on there, opportunities to do so, opportunities to deliver training, should you wish to do that as well. And there's also an NHSR book club, um, so please look out for that sort of stuff. Uh, so today we will run this webinar um, up until two o'clock. Um, we are being recorded um, and, and all the, um, the video and all the uh, materials will be, will be available afterwards um, and you'll be able to catch up on our YouTube page. Um, if you have any questions, we do have the live Q&A function, so please put any questions in there and the team will get to that um, towards the end. Um, any questions at all, just, just put them in there. Similarly, if you've got any questions after the webinar, um, just get in touch with us. We've got the, the NHSR community Twitter page and also the Slack channel. Um, you'll see details of that on the screen um, and somebody from the community will, will be happy to help you out. Towards the end, we'll also have um, a bit of a Mentimeter to get some feedback from you. Um, we'd be grateful if you could let us know how you, how you find the session and, and, and we'd love to hear um, all your feedback. So I shall hand over to the King's College London team um, and they will talk us through um, today's programme. So thank you very much indeed for the introduction and thank you more broadly as a community for inviting us to participate. Um, oh, can you hear me? It's telling me my mic's muted. OK, so it's really a pleasure to uh, find out a bit more about what you're doing and to let you know what we're doing. I think it's um, a really good dovetail of, of activities. So our programme <coughs> was um, part of a it's it's it was part of a call from UKRI, specifically this one from the Medical Research Council to um, deliver uh, big data training uh, into all sorts of different um, contexts to really think about upskilling the workforce going forward in many different contexts. And our particular strength at King's is, is our, our connection between our hospitals and our university. And so we decided to um, write a bid to enable the big data revolution through skills training. The skills training here is really around interdigitating um, the health uh, the healthcare workforce as in its broadest term. So for medical non medical health professionals and anyone working in the NHS. And one of the things we wanted to do was not just provide training um, for people to improve their you know employability and go forth and adapt when their roles change. Was, but also to actually find out that they would need to do that. Um, and, and that's something which we, we thought was very important. How do you know you're going to need all of these uh, big data skills going forward? So our programme is, uh, is really designed around three pillars, uh, health data science, which is focused on electronic health uh, record data. And in this context includes a lot of statistics and modules which uh, vary in shape and detail um, according to um, the type of, of work that particular uh, individuals would need to apply to their own roles. Um, work package two is omics, so the genetics or molecular omics data that is uh, very um, 
very much growing in importance in our diagnostics and healthcare uh, generally, and those are based on carpentries and Alessandra will tell you some more about those uh, a bit later on. And work uh, package three is focused on artificial intelligence, specifically medical imaging and radiology data, because this is the strength of um, the colleagues who work in this space here at King's. So we wanted modular learning with personalized learning paths, a way to find out whether you need this training and how do you know that you need this training? So some introduction to how to find out if you're going to need this in your current role in the NHS. Now we do extend this training to others, degree awarding uh, students who are postgraduate research students, for example, but its primary focus is on the workforce, including our other stakeholders, such as our industrial collaborators, which are listed here. <coughs> So the importance of this program was to make it flexible, to make it open. We wanted to have a, um, a, a train the trainers type approach. We have strategic goals that meet real worker needs and not just training for the sake of training and ticking a box and saying you've done your CPD and you move on to next year. Really trying to give you something that's useful. We want obviously to embed equality, diversity and inclusion. We want sustainability to be part of this so that it doesn't just end when our grant funding ends. We want to evaluate the success of the programme so that we can modify it <coughs> going forwards. And we have a strong management and governance um, uh, group uh, groups around this uh, programme. So our main message here is we want to upskill the healthcare workforce and beyond. We want to solve the problem of the data deluge and the digital transformation in the workforce, finding better and more flexible ways of both teaching and learning. It was based on our flexible training that was nurtured in our genomics medicine MSc, which could also be broken down into modules and bits and pieces that you can take at various levels in partnership with Health Education England that we teach from King's and from St George's in London. The beneficiaries, as I said before, would be academics, doctors, non-medical health professionals, industrial partners, and any member of this healthcare workforce that whose job is gonna evolve with the increased uh, data that's available and, the, and also the sophistication of diagnostics and, um, and the way um, the whole a uh, piece of, of this area is going to be uh, em emboldened by the uh, large amounts of data that are generated. So I've just got here a slide that Emily made, which shows all of the uh, modules that are uh, um, being offered through the three pillars. The arrows underneath the boxes will give you suggestions as to where you go from and to. So you would start with an introduction to Python um, before you went to do much with your AI and then go on to machine learning, for example. You can do this in the context of health data science, but you can also do this in the context of AI. So it depends what your application is going to be, what you think you're going to need. Uh, but you can actually enter and dip into any level depending on your previous experience. So there's no um, there's no uh, uh, prescriptive way of taking these modules. They are very interactive and our goal is for them to be um, to be um, asynchronous. So for those people who are working in in the in healthcare professions, when the time is not necessarily very flexible, you can tailor this to meet your own personal learning needs. So without any more ado, I'm going to introduce um, Zara, who is going to take on um, a description of the health data science uh, pillar in the first instance. And I think John will uh, be giving some demonstrations following that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Zara um, and I'm a senior teaching fellow who's supporting pillar one um, around sort of health data science. Um, and I'm going to be accompanied by John Langham, who's our learning technology specialist, who's supporting the development of um, our particular modules um, in this online environment. So just to give you a bit of an introduction um, to 
um, one of the one of the key modules that we're currently um, developing, and this is an introduction to our module for health research. And basically, this course aims to provide a basic introduction to the R software, but to be used in a health context. And we believe that the course will support students to develop not only key programming skills and principles, but also be able to apply those skills to their given data um, um, mechanisms to analyse your own data and as well as existing data that we um, give you to practice on. And for this particular course, you're going to look at how to obtain an installer, how to deal with various data objects, how to import and export data, um, and then you'll also be introduced to some really key statistical analysis techniques um, and how you might be able to program in R to be able to do these. Now, the aim of this introductory course is not only designed to give you the foundational tools to analyse your own de health data, but also to begin your journey to become a strong programming practitioner. And it's this course that will give you that support to be able to move on to the other kind of courses or modules within Pillar 1. Um, so just a little bit on the educational approach for the modules that we've developed in Pillar 1. It's all based on Level 7 Master's Learning. You're very much being taught by expert by statisticians and informaticians in um, R. Um, it's a fully integrated online learning um, platform for development in a student's own time. And there are lots of opportunities for you to consolidate your learning through quizzes and interactive practical sessions in R. You have an option to make use of a hosted R studio service and you'll also get access to what we call a Docker to have key software and packages installed on your own computers so that you can use this with your own data. You're also going to get access to a wider learning community, which will include your peers and some course and topic advisors for Q&A. And we are currently looking at um, CPD accreditation for all our courses. I'm just going to hand over to John now. He's going to give you a bit of information about our learning interface and give you a bit of a demonstration of um, our introduction to our course so you can see how we've um, implemented it. Thanks, John. Right, hopefully I'm unmuted. Um, so I'm just going to go into a little bit of uh, how we've um, tried to make these uh, training modules uh, more engaging, uh, really. And one of the problems with um, learning from videos is that uh, they're not necessarily very engaging. I certainly um, find it difficult to sort of keep my attention going. And so we've done things to uh, keep people's attention uh, engaged. Uh, and how have we done that? Uh, we've used uh, within the Moodle um, virtual learning environment, we've used a tool called H5P, which allows us to add interactions to um, training videos. And the two types of interaction we've, we've used are, first of all, H5P quizzes. And secondly, we've used, uh, we've integrated shiny web app quizzes, which, and I'll, you'll see how it all pans out when I do the demonstration, but basically the thing about Shiny web apps is that you can actually try out some R code interactively. Um, I think that's what I'm going to say now. Uh, I'm just going to switch to the demonstration and that will uh, hopefully speak uh, for itself. So I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. And uh, so I'm sure somebody will say there's a problem with this. So this is the um, KHP Moodle page, and this is our, this is what you see when you go into our course um, for the first time. You can see um, it's a beta test going on at the moment, and I'm just going to kind of skim down. So each bit of the module is divided into sections. We've got a kind of a preamble, uh, getting started, and then here we've got these sessions, what sessions, which are actually teaching sessions. And each of these teaching sessions has a set of uh, videos and also practicals associated with them. I'm going to go straight down to this one, uh, descriptive and inferential statistics. And I'm just going to do what a student would do, just click on um, this segment and immediately you can see I've got a number of lectures there. And I'm going to zoom straight down to this lecture, lecture four. I'm going to start running it. 
in deviance explained uh, maybe you might want to turn the volume down a bit indeed, I'm quite sure what you're here, but if you can turn that that's great so um that's about it well, there actually, is a different type of that so that you can hear my voice so you'll notice um at the bottom of the screen there's a kind of pro slider bar which moves you navigates you around in the video you notice these little dots and circles and this dot is this particular dot is um a help button so i can anytime the student if they want to check something uh, they can just press help and they go straight away into this page uh, which has links to all the entities and kind of things they might want to sort of check out, uh, including a link back to an earlier video about how to how to use this, uh, how to study in this module. So um, every every video has this, and then here a little bit further on this circle, this is an H5P quiz. So I'm just going to play the video a bit, and here we go, factors, quick quiz. So um, run that quiz and here we have just a, um, a multiple choice with many answers. So that I know, uh, let's see if I can get this right. Categorical variables must always contain at least one non numeric trap. That's not true. Factors are a way in which R represents ca categorical variables. That's true. Variables which have a numeric data type may be categorical. That's true. Also, that's false. And that last one's true, I know that. And so I'm going to do that and I can check that. And I've got three out of three, I, I'm amazing. But I did actually write that quiz. <laughs> and so hopefully, so now, um, just... you know, you won't be sort of falling asleep. So I'm going to go um, fast forward because I haven't got very much time, probably got a couple of minutes left. These dots here are other kinds of interaction. Now this one I know is a link to uh, a shiny quiz on logistic regression. And this, I'm just going to press the button, you can see what's going to happen. So this is now loading a shiny web app from our server. And here we've got the um, a, an example basically using the heptocellular carcinoma data set, which is a pretty good data set. And here you can see, I won't go, go through everything, but here you can see an R cell. So I could, for example, look at this data just by typing in uh, the name of the data frame. If I hit run code, I've immediately got a really nice um, window on that data. I can put any R code I like. You know, I can put print um, hello in there and it'll run it. So this is a great kind of tool, I think, um, for um, hopefully getting um, students kind of more involved and engaged with the course. Uh, so here we've got some um, more code. Um, this is a cell that's to create a logistic regression model. Here's a quiz that's uh, actually with a shiny app. You can also uh, include quizzes. That's part of the interaction between shiny and the uh, learn R um, library. I'm going to go straight into uh, this visualization, which just sort of shows you the kind of things you can do. And here is a um, 3D plot of the logistic regression uh, to which we applied uh, principal components analysis. And you can see this, I rather like this um, sort of 3D sigmoidal uh, surface that you get um, from um, a logistic regression with two uh, predictors. And the pink bit shows the uh, uh, decision boundary, the linear decision boundary, or the decision boundary plane, and here you can see the data points. These are the uh, purple and yellow um, balls, and this is, I think, is a nice facility, and hopefully people uh, will find it interesting and want to do more. And I'm going to finish there, and I'm going to unshare my desktop. Thank you. Thanks very much, John, for introducing your pillar and this very engaging demonstration. Um, hopefully all of you can hear me. Um, a short nod, yes, perfect. Uh, my name is Dasha um, and I'm a learning technologist for Pillar 2. Uh, we're called Amex um, and I'll guide you through what uh, we do at the pillar. Um, first of all, impo most important introduction is our academic lead, Alessandra Vigilante. Maybe she'll be able to un- uh, um, Put her video for a second to say hi. Uh, that's her, and this is the face. Hi everyone. Seeing. 
this is the face you'll be seeing in all of the lectures from Pillar 2 um, as Alessandra is um, uh, reading uh, the courses that we offer. So what is Omix? Um, in our pillar, we focus on um, everything to do with biological data from big experiments. Basically, um, for example, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and any other omics, hence the name. Um, so uh, to work with omics data, uh, you will need, um, we guide uh, participants through every kind of step of working uh, with omics data, starting with um, what you need to design a big successful experiment for those who are involved in actually design and, uh, of experiment in a lab, uh, in a laboratory stage. Um, and sometimes um, when you don't need to design, when you only want to work with data that already exists online, you'll uh, be using online resources to access. And we offer a kind of training of how to um, either design from scratch an experiment in the way that the data from it is well understandable, well collectible, and you can work with it well um, or obtain uh, this kind of data online. Uh, the next thing you need to do when you're working with omics data and is manipulate and visualize data. And here is where we offer um, training in R um, because this is the main kind of um, a tool that is used to work with omics data at the moment. Um, uh, mo uh, very importantly, and this is a course I highly recommend for anyone who, even people who are quite uh, proficient with R already, is using spreadsheets for recording data and metadata. The reason for this is because um, it is very essential uh, to provide a good quality um, data f to input into R, um, as I'm sure many of you know that. Um, and this course, uh, this very short um, but kind of intensive course, um, explains exactly that. How to, even if you're not doing every step of data analysis and data collection yourself, uh, making sure that the data is recorded and kind of brushed up in a in a way that is readable by the computer so the bioinformaticians uh, can work with it easily is essential and very important. So I highly recommend this um, and that's why it's part of the pipeline that we offer. And the next kind of step is uh, to actually use R once you've got your data, you want to input it into R and um, manipulate it in a way that gives you a representation of questions that you want to answer. What kind of genes are expressed in the cell? What kind of uh, proteins are more expressed in this disease versus healthy controls. Um, all of this uh, is um, done using data manipulation and visualization using R. And another thing is um, we have two more um, kind of short, um, more in-depth um, approaches where we look at statistics with R and how to make uh, so uh, quite a short course on uh, diving deep into understanding specifically the statistical elements and how to perform them in R, which is, um, and the second one is um, how to share your data and make it reproducible with R and Git. And this is particularly important when working in collaborations. And we take quite a lot in um, um, of in information and learning experience from software development where um, sharing a development process is essential um, and this is becoming more and more important in writing uh, scripts and R and analyzing data as well. Um, so we teach a bit of that. Uh, the next step that you need to do is um, uh, to analyze big data. Sometimes just running R on your computer is not um, enough. You can, um, you need to actually use um, what's called a cluster. Um, which is a remote computer with a lot of memory and of, to use that you need to use uh, you need to be able to uh, slide please you need to use um, uh, Unix uh, which is a um, interface so uh, a command line interface where um, you want uh, you'll be able to work with um, uh, bigger data and actually um, access remote computers and clusters to run scripts and such uh, slide please uh, yes, as I said, and the next and a kind of final and ultimate um, goal is to run pipelines uh, which require all of those steps before. So NGS, Next Generalized Sequencing Pipelines, is genomics data, um, and we want, uh, want to show how to, from design of the experiment uh, to recording data using Excel to kind of working with um, R um, in um, visualization and manipulation of data and run bigger scripts on um, um, on Unix and remote clusters. Uh, slide please. 
Um, so you'll be um, able to see how all of those skills combine into kind of the ultimate goal of running a big NGS pipeline. However, I do want to highlight again that you don't need to do every step yourself, but it is essential to understand how each step connects to each other and what kind of data processing is needed so that you can collaborate better. Uh, and I'll give you a very quick run through of what specifically kind of uh, competences and courses we offer at the moment. Uh, so we have two levels of competence in R specifically, basic R, uh, which kind of gives you an overview of data manipulation and visualization, and advanced R where we go into debugging and uh, kind of scripting in detail, uh, writing your own functions rather than using those functions available already. Um, that's advanced R, and then we also have two more um, uh, kind of dive-ins um, st called stats with R. Um, um, as I said, we'll look into more uh, in deeply and version control in R. So these are the courses that we either have available at the moment or developing actively. And this is an, uh, to deliver those courses, we use um, um, parallel coding. Uh, so the lectures are recorded in a way that the teacher in um, a video is coding and you code alongside them. Uh, and this is very um, popular amongst like data science um, community and um, this is what data carpentry um, um, instructors advise. And Alessandra, who will be your um, instructor for this courses, um, is a, a certified data carpentry instructor. Um, and so we use um, uh, materials based on a data carpentry courses and process them in our own way and put them on learning platform that John just very uh, helpfully uh, demonstrated. Uh, so once again, in line with pillar one, as we are all aligned in the same vision and strategy, um, we also have interactive videos and quizzes with helpful tips. Each session uh, ends with a challenge that um, you can use, uh, that is given time, uh, a student is given time to um, perform on their own and then uh, explanation is um, uh, given. Um, and then we also host um, online resource. Um, sorry, oh, it is an online resource, and we also host regular live uh, sessions with Q and A, so you feel a little bit more engaged rather than uh, using um, a videos only. And the next couple of slides is just kind of what you will see when you log in. Very similarly to Pillar One, um, you start with Basic R of the Data Carpentry. Basic R is a very important uh, element of. Um, kind of working with any kind of data. So we we have multiple kind of approaches to this, um, to teaching basic R and you can choose um, uh, what works better for you. Uh, you will click on um, a lecture and an interactive video will pop up where you can go through. You can see there's some bookmarks, there's some quizzes um, available, single choice, multiple choice, um, and there'll be um, a summary quiz at the end. Uh, but most importantly, during this whole time, you will be using your own kind of little R, either a software on your computer or you can access uh, R from browser remotely on your server. So you will be watching the video and coding and um, in parallel. Um, so this is um, our approach and our summary and I'll hand next to the next speaker. Cool, great. Thank you so much. Uh, Zara, Johnny and Dasha. So hopefully that's given you like a little overview of uh, what our Innovation Scholars program is going to offer. As Rebecca mentioned at the start, there is a AI pillar and we haven't had them talk today because they're running all their training in Python. So I will touch on them, um, but we have tried to highlight our, our training specifically for this webinar. We really hope that we can work with the NHSR community to complement the R training that's already offered uh, through the NHSR community. As you know, this is a great resource, but hopefully with this on-demand learning and materials that you can come back to when it suits you, this will also complement the live learning that uh, NHSR does offer. And those uh, resources are there for you uh, always so you won't lose access to them or anything like that. Another little module that we will be launching towards the end of the year is an introduction to data science module. So this will be hosted on FutureLearn and this is a non-technical course. So it might be for your colleagues in NHS that you have to interact with but haven't yet got their uh, head or 
and uh, around the different terminologies. Uh, where is this big data actually taking uh, healthcare? And this is going to be hopefully a really interactive, uh, non-technical introduction to data science module that might suit you and your colleagues uh, as you start to work as in teams that require more data training. And as I've mentioned, we also the, we focus on the R specific modules, but there are another there's lots more modules focused in Python, uh, AI and other data science uh, analysis skills that will hopefully be really helpful for you and your colleagues. I want to echo what Rebecca said and thank Mohammed and Charlotte for inviting us to speak and Scott for hosting this webinar. Uh, the community on Slack has been really great. I've had a lot of questions and you've always uh, come through with answers, which we really appreciate all the time. Um, sometimes making sure that the program really does suit the healthcare workforce is key and having that community there has been really helpful. We have the uh, website there if you want to check us out, innovationscholars.co.uk and we're also on Twitter and we're happy to take any questions. So yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, um, everybody. That was that was really interesting. So if anybody does have any questions, please um, put them into the, uh, the Q&A chat uh, on Teams and, and we'll take them as they come. Uh, whilst we're waiting for any to, uh, to appear, um, just some thoughts from me. I thought it was a really interesting um, presentation, guys. It was good to see what's what's going on in different parts of uh, of the UK. Um, I was really impressed with the um, the resources that you've got available to students, uh, particularly around some of the uh, the shiny app quizzes, which I think um, would would be um, really interesting to see. Um, the stuff that Dasha was saying around the reproducible uh, pipeline stuff, which has been a huge, a huge thing in Public Health Scotland, so I can imagine how much benefit that's been for you guys and how much time that, it, that will save you in the long run. Um, and it was great, great to see that slide at the end, Emily, because the whole way through this I was thinking how good would a collaboration be between NHSR community and you guys, so it was great to see that pop up at the end there. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, we haven't got any questions yet. Um, I think there's going to be a, a Mentimeter, uh, which, which will hopefully appear on the screen shortly. Um, that will allow us to get some feedback. Um, and, and obviously, as I said at the start, we can take feedback on um, the R Community Twitter um, or, or the R Community Slack channel, and one of the team will get back to you. I think um, there's a question about that the link, all the courses currently do say close to application. So, um yes currently our learning johnny and dasha have been working really hard to get these training courses into a state that they are all asynchronous and online so we are will be launching our first uh introduction to our course just after the jubilee weekend so that's going to be on uh around monday june the 6th so We'll have comms out about that on Twitter, and uh, if you'd like to join our mailing list, you'll also be the first to know when modules go live. So it's not that they're currently closed, they're all just slightly under development and getting ready to go live through the year. So um, you're not missing anything just yet. OK, thanks, Emily. Um, we've got a few minutes more, so if anybody would like to ask any more questions, well, I think one's just appeared there, actually. Yep, somebody's asked a great talk. How do prospective students oh it's disappeared off my screen? How do prospective students sign up? Great. So yeah, you'll either through the website you'll be able to browse the course catalogue and these links will take you we we're using the King's Health Partners Learning Hub and these it's like um it's the back end is Moodle, so you might use this in your own workplace or it's similar to Blackboard and you'll be able to sign up directly through that. So they, uh, you'll use a website like a course catalog and then sign up directly through the uh, Learning Hub and that's available to anyone in the NHS. You don't have to be a King's Health Partner uh, NHS staff member. There's a sign up bottom at the end for anyone uh, with any email. Um, probably not, not advertised on Eventbrite because they are static courses that or well, not static courses, asynchronous courses that are on this Moodle. So you best to use the mailing list, which you can join through 
uh, the website. There's a contact us and I'll pop you on the mailing list. I'll also use the Slack channel on the NHSR community to advertise them. And because once the event, once the module is on King's Health Partners Learning Hub, it will always be there available. So uh, it's not going to be just on a one off page. And if we do have a Q&A session associated with that module, if you're signed up to the module, you'll get a notification about any live modules. So yeah, hopefully the um, we can add you to the mailing list. OK, thanks, Emily. Um, any final questions before we finish up today, guys? OK, so as I say, we will be able to take any further questions or comments um, on the social media channels. Um, just before we finish up, um, I'd just like to thank the team from King's College London today again um, for the presentation. We will make this stuff available um, and the webinar will be um, viewable on YouTube afterwards as well. Um, for next month's session, which will be run on the 15th of June, um, that will be run by my team uh, from Public Health Scotland. Um, so we will be hosting a session on um, statistical disclosure control methods and how we're using R um, to, uh, uh, to automate some of that. So the team have been developing some code over the last little while, um, which has now turned into an, an RShiny app. Um, we will go through some of the, um, the theory of statistical disclosure control. So that's ultimately about um, suppressing um, low numbers and, and, and hiding any risky data. The app does all that for us. Um, the team will go through what the app looks like, how to use it. We'll potentially go into a little bit of the code uh, within that as well, and we will show some of the theory behind disclosure control. So if that sounds of interest, please sign up for the, the session. I think it's the same time um, as this one started at one o'clock on the 15th of June. Um, and if you do have any questions about that, uh, please get in touch with me um, either via NHS, our community or via Public Health Scotland, and we can talk you through that as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed that today. Thank you very much to the team again, and we will hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you very thank much. You.